Hi everybody, uh, this is your classmate Bashira um, and I hope everybody's doing well. I'm hoping you guys are staying safe and staying healthy. My classmates and my professor, uh, it's a hard time so I just hope everybody's doing okay. Okay, so for my case analysis, I'll be focusing um, on the school district that I work at, um, specifically the school, of course, that I work at, Clinton Elementary School. And a little bit of reiteration of my the background of the school. It's a rural school district in Clinton, Louisiana, East Feliciana Parish. We are one of three elementary schools in the district. We have a total of 242 students at our school. So as you can tell, it's a very small school, especially by our um, student ratio, student to teacher ratio, which is one to 15. So we have um, pretty, for the most part, small class sizes. Um, I don't think I've seen a class larger than 22, 22 students. Um, the predominant, uh, sorry, produ majority of the students that attend our school are 88% African American and 82% of students qualify for a free and reduced lunch. And the reason I even mentioned the demographics of the student population is because I think it's important for us to um, have awareness about who are continuously disenfranchised um, when it comes to technology and resources. And even during a, um, a pandemic, right? Students with the privilege to keep learning and, and the privilege to engage in distance learning are students who usually attended schools who um, already have some form of strong technology access and technology resources for the students. Um, students who attend schools where homework and technology go hand in hand and, and that um, they've been engaging and interacting with technology in those ways. Um, but students who live in low income, usually rural areas, um, they already struggle with broadband access, access to Wi-Fi, and which makes it even more difficult to distance learn. Um, and then on top of that, you put like the lack of resources. There, my school, for instance, we are unable to send each student um, a, a laptop or a Chromebook to go home with for them to continue distance learning. So right now we are trying to um, problem solve around that, and it's been very difficult um, with not all families having access to um, Wi-Fi or strong connectivity and of course lack of um, resources like tablets, laptops for them to continue distance learning with. So I think it's it's just important that we keep that in mind um, which, which students and which populations uh, continue to are, are forced to continue lagging behind um, when it comes to us implementing technology. Okay, so um, to talk a little bit about our learning environment, um, right now we have traditional seating, I have a carpet um, and a few bean bags so the students can feel like they have a little bit of flex flexibility in the classroom. Um, we have a whiteboard and a smart board. The smart board has whiteboard capabilities. Uh, it also has Bluetooth access and so you can um, link your, your phone and your computer and other different tech, technical devices up to the smart board. Um, students interact with the smart board through learning games. We also use it for um, YouTube learning when we want to watch videos throughout our instruction to supplement our instruction. Um, students are also able to model writing for their friends on the smart board. Um, as well as the teacher is also able to. Um, I definitely have found the smart board very resourceful in model writing uh, because you can set it up like a page, almost like an, like an actual physical page and use it, your smart pen to um, model. Uh, we have two class computers and then we have two computer labs in the school for um, research purposes to aid the students in enhancing typing skills, etc. We have a set of Chromebooks, but we share uh, a set of Chromebooks per grade level. And right now, the curriculum that um, is being used for math is known as the Eureka Zern um, curriculum. And it is based on one-on-one um, -on -one 
tutoring with the students and it uses artificial intelligence because it works on the students level um, in the unit and builds on their understanding or um, reiterates certain problems um, that the student might not understand and then it, it tutors the student on a one-to-one one-on-one um, -on -one basis and so because Zern and um, sorry because math and ELA are two core subjects that are uh, being taught at the same time the Chromebooks go to math because they have priority because of the type of curriculum that they um, use and I'll show you a little bit more about our curriculum in a second we use the learn zillion guidebooks curriculum that has really become popular in Louisiana um, and then we use the social studies weekly um, magazine based curriculum for social studies um, and it basically has two fic fictitious, fictitious characters um, named Elena and Jackson, and they take students through history and through time using um, different sets of magazines. And the mag magazines each represent um, a period in history. And so, and it's very interactive and very colorful. Um, includes a crossword puzzles and all sorts of different things that really engage the students. And I'll show y'all a little bit of what those two look like. So for the Lightning Thief, or excuse me, for the ELA curriculum, we're currently on the Lightning Thief unit. Um, students can make their own account of the um, online version of the curriculum. We also go through the lessons together on our smart board, and so they interact with it that way. Students are able to log in and take quizzes or talk them walk themselves through the guidebook um, lessons itself, looking look at additional materials. Usually they'll have like grammar lessons in the additional materials. Let me show y'all what the lessons look like. They have an embedded um, standards for each lesson. And yeah, they essentially talk the teacher and the student um, on um, learning um, the different techniques and learning the different, um, essentially guiding the students through understanding these standards. And then there are formative and summative assessments embedded in the curriculum. Okay, and as you can see, all the standards are up there. If you click on it, it'll tell you exactly what the student is supposed to be able to understand by the end of the lesson, etc. Okay, and then on to our social studies curriculum. This uh, The student can also make an account for themselves online. Like I said, we, we don't use um, the online versions because of the you know lack of the amount of um, Chromebooks are not enough and, and we have to use them for math. Um, but students can see different articles under each magazine for the social studies curriculum. It can even read to them, which we, we do use for students who um, are struggling struggling readers or who, do, who don't read on grade level. They um, have included different content videos to supplement lessons and to supplement the magazine. Like I mentioned, it's a physical magazine, um, but it does have an online component. Um, each week has a, a weekly assessment as well. Okay. So that is essentially um, how things are right now. Okay. Um, and the advantages of um, the kind of learning environment that we have right now is that we're, we are able to provide some support for diverse learners through programs like System 44. And what System 44 does is it's an intervention um, software, basically, that's tailored to each student's reading levels. Um, so it uses AI and basically just uh, helps them to intervene in ways that we can't in whole group instruction. We also have the ability to model and engage with students with the smart board. As I mentioned, they've been particularly uh, re useful to teachers. And then basic pro uh, research projects. Um, the disadvantages are that there's a lack of equitable interaction with technical resources. 
Um, so for instance, um, oftentimes fifth grade will get priority with using the computers because they are, they do their leap testing on online um, versus fourth grade that does it on paper. And so they get priority with that, but um, it would be helpful if all grades got the same opportunity to prepare students to take assessments online. Um, Project-based learning is limited in the curriculum, uh, so there's not really too many spaces for students to explore their creativity or use technology to enhance their creativity um, or explore more about themselves as learners. There's also a lack of one-to-one -one student technology devices. Like I mentioned, we have to share the um, Chromebooks. So here are some uh, visions for a future learning environment that would use emerging technology. So of course, so these are just five things that I would hope um, would embody that learning environment. Personalized learning, enhanced small group instruction, enhanced support for diverse learners, um, conducting virtual field trips, supporting innovation and creativity. So we, um, of course, we, we, we could use the use of IOT for many, many things. Um, some of the ideas that I uh, came up with is like we can use maybe smart board, smartphones and um, tablets to do on the go research on different topics. If students um, don't understand a particular word in the middle of a lesson, they can take the time to look up that word. Um, translations for multilingual students as well as access to digital books and leveled readers for class time or even for the unit reader itself. IoT could also be used for data collection, collecting students' data and core, um, sorry, students' attendance data and coordinating that with um, which instructions and lessons they missed, which standards do they still um, need intervention for, um, which ones, you know, and, and tailoring it to that um, making sure that no student has missed any um, core content throughout the year. The use of augmented reality, uh, um, AR, how could we use that? Okay, um, one idea that I had was to have like some sort of pop-up dictionary uh, for visuals for different grade level and rigorous vocabulary words. Um, so that students can better be prepared for standardized testing, oftentimes a lack of exposure to the vocabulary and understanding of the vocabulary um, um, kind of sets students back. And that has been a critique of um, state standardized testing for a while. Bringing Studies Weekly, the social studies curriculum I showed you all, to life, um, even though the magazines are pretty engaging and interactive and um, very vibrant, the VR goggles would allow them to have some full um, body engagement in their learning. Uh, as you can see in the picture, he's like reaching out to touch something. Who knows what he's reaching out to touch, but he's having a good time. <laughs> um, taking virtual field trips in the classroom. Um, students in rural areas don't often have as many opportunities for field trips. And so that could be a, um, a gap that vir AR could um, bridge also. Um, many lessons and interventions for diverse learners. I think that one is pretty self-explanatory. Um, the use of AI intelligence. Well, before I get into AI, I just wanted to show you all um, a quick clip of technology of AR being used in the classroom that I thought was pretty interesting. Okay, so um, so here students get to put on a goggle and then it tells them to focus on uh, perhaps this is a subject in geography and they focus in on a certain continent and you boom you see the animals pop up and it shows you what kind of animals are um, specific to that area um, in another instance students focus on a certain geographical location and then it shows the political boundaries of that uh, location so it's a lot of powerful learning that can um, happen through these AR and virtual reality technologies. Um, the last one being the use of artificial intelligence. Through We can use them through software and games um, to enhance creativity and project-based learning. We could also use them as a supplement tutoring device in, in the classroom when students need on-the-go intervention um, or 
on the go refocusing of uh, their engagement. Oftentimes some students have struggle with whole group instruction. Um, they can also be used to gen generalize personalized homework and problems, and problems that are specific to the student. 